Before I start discussing the war itself, we really need to consider in greater detail how much the success that we are seeing the uh, Viet Minh over the French was down to Ho Chi Minh. So I want to spend a bit of time looking at Ho Chi Minh as a leader and his convictions because without him it is difficult to consider that the Vietnamese would have been able to bind their purpose together to such effect. Now, um, I'm not in, in any way um, downplaying the importance of Giap as a military leader, he was superb. But Ho Chi Minh motivated the Vietnamese population and populations in countries looking to break away from colonialism around the world. So Ho Chi Minh means practically Ho the Most Enlightened. And what we are seeing is this as one of 70 different non-diplomes that the Goyan Tat Than would use. But it is the most famous and it is the one which stuck. So this is someone who seems to have slightly uh, shady background or elusive background that he had to change his name or use his name in different forms so regularly but that's really part of uh, his attempts to distance himself from French surveillance. Okay. So Ho Chi Minh was at the very heart of Vietnamese independence um, and from the point that he presented a petition to the American no negotiating team under Woodrow Wilson in Paris in 1919 asking for self-determination. Now this was the Peace of Paris, most famously the Treaty of Versailles, that really uh, set the agenda for the destruction of the Prussian Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. And um, Ho Chi Minh was um, forthright enough to say, well, you know, you're doing this for other countries that you've uh, vanquished. Why are you not going to do it for the people who are under your control? Now, it is doubtful that Woodrow Wilson ever saw the petition, um, but it shows uh, a daring and a persistence, which I think is, is worth considering um, for his contribution overall. So the French authorities in uh, Vietnam had been aware of um, Ho from 1908. Um, he acted as an interpreter during a protest against agricultural tax increases in Hue, which was then the capital under French imperial control, and as someone with an education who could speak French, um, he acted, hopefully, he thought, in the interests of his uh, fellow countrymen. He actually fled Vietnam in 1911 because the degree of surveillance um, was becoming quite acute um, and did not return to Vietnam for 30 years. However, it should be pointed out that um, he didn't move away from the influence of France. In fact, he moved to France along with one or two other places that he visited. But it allowed him to cultivate relationships and hopefully to move his longer term goal forward. Now, in France, uh, Ho Chi Minh became a member of the French Socialist Party, um, but ultimately he found their um, conservatism, forgive the, the irony of this, um, difficult. The, the Socialists were not interested in applying the principles of the French Revolution um, to the French colonies. So Mao, Mao had been influenced by the writings of Lenin, and we find that Ho starts to look at Lenin's writings, and um, we are seeing him latching on to Lenin's view that anti-colonialism, and Lenin was very much an anti-imperialist in, 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 in every respect, that anti-colonialism could aid the overthrow of capitalism in the rich industrial imperial nations. 
So although Marxist ideology emphasized um, revolution in the industrial nations, that there was a potential for struggle in the um, colonial outposts of the European metropoles. And in that way, communism could galvanize an anti-capitalist stance. So um, once the French communists broke away from the socialists, Ho joined um, and became quite a leading and well-known figure. So um, it came to the point that the minister of the colonies, Albert uh, Sarup, um, both threatened and attempted to bribe Ho Chi Minh to cooperate. So even though he was um, a person of interest, etc., informally, the French government would talk to him in the same way that we talk about backdoor channels through to other people who could have influence in different scenarios. Okay. Um, what was being offered was greater Vietnamese autonomy under French rule. And that was never part of Poe's agenda. So those overtures went nowhere. So I, I talked about um, Ho's different non-diplomies and he secretly left France in June 1923 to go to Moscow. He was convinced that um, a Marxist and Leninist approach was going to be the best way to allow Vietnam to overthrow the yoke of imperial, uh, imperialist um, repression. And yes, I am parodying um, an anti um, capitalist view on that. Okay, and that um, Moscow was the place to go. Uh, Ho Chi Minh was trained at the University of the Toilers of the East. Um, and having been given his um, re education, cultural training, he moved on to South China um, as a revolutionary, um, promoting communism for Vietnam against the, uh, to those who'd been displaced from Vietnam, largely students who were studying in China at the time. So um, what we see in 1925, Ho creates the Revolutionary Youth League of Vietnam. And he's co-opting Vietnamese students in China and uh, further along the line in 1930, he helps establish the Indo-Chinese Communist Party. Now, he does move around the area quite a lot, and, and eventually he's imprisoned by the British in Hong Kong for two years. So um, there is a phrase that's usually identified to Winston Churchill, but it will apply to a number of other people, that to a certain degree, the 1930s for Ho were the wilderness years. He was laying the foundations for what came in the future, but was not able to change or influence what was happening in his home country to any degree. And, and I, I think you need to, to, to consider that uh, Viet um, comes from the Chinese. I mean, it, it's those from beyond. And the French had taken on board uh, the imperial um, spirit, so to speak, effectively annexing Indochina from uh, 1858 and establishing more direct and formal rule from 1861. So, as with most European powers, what they are doing, um, and French colonial rule was no different than that, was through a network of French-speaking Vietnamese officials that they were able to maintain a certain degree of local control, but also by co-opting in economic interests. So it was a Vietnamese professional or merchant class who had much to gain from cooperating with the French in their country, making a living and ensuring the development of their country economically. If it was the merchant class that was really benefiting from French rule of the Vietnamese and the professionals who served um, the needs of the economy, then 90% of the Vietnamese saw no benefits from imperial rule. Um, and to a degree in 1940, um, the French surrender to Hitler 
fact was welcomed in Vietnam as a humiliation to their colonial masters. Most Vietnamese held that view. Um, but the Vichy regime that followed collaborated with the Japanese. And by 1941, um, the Japanese had uh, effectively controlled uh, Vietnam by the presence of their soldiers. So nominally, we still have a um, French colony controlled by Vichy, but um, the regulation of Japanese soldiers was changing this, this situation quite considerably. So uh, Ho Chi Minh was unequivocal at this. He said, he described the Japanese fascist hyenas now controlling the French imperial rule. So the Vietnamese, in Ho's view, were the slaves of slaves. And that we are seeing a, a huge change in the complexion of imperial rule at the time. So uh, Ho Chi Minh very much identified with the Allies, the, the, the free thinking allies in terms of Britain, America and the Soviet Union. And he hoped very much that Vietnam would benefit from the same liberation that the Allies were promising for Europe when the war was over. So Ho eventually returned to Vietnam itself, uh, 8th of February 1941, uh, once more travelling incognito. Um, and by May, he had convinced the Indo-Chinese Communist Party to join a broadly based league for the independence of Vietnam. And that's what effectively the Viet Minh uh, meant. This is something that we see across uh, Southeast Asia and East Asia. Uh, we can find examples in Malaysia and China as well, that um, disparate groups with different political agendas would fight together against imperial control, and particularly against the Japanese. So um, it was a long and hard fought campaign. And at that point, the Viet Minh were not able to make very much uh, headway against the Japanese. But the famine of the winter of 1944 and 1945 in, in northern Vietnam and the northern part of central Vietnam meant that perhaps one to two million people lost their lives. Uh, and this is not unheard of in the Second World War, particularly when you have issues of transportation and the supply of forces around the world, that uh, famine rears rears its ugly head again. Now, the Viet Minh gained um, from their attempts to relieve the famine um, because um, their, their efforts strengthen the support that they have in, amongst the Vietnamese population as a whole. And um, we can see how uh, allies divide by the 9th of March 1945. The Japanese um, seize control formally of Indochina. Um, the way the f war was progressing in Europe it would appear that France was turning against Hitler in the same way that um, the liberation from the D-Day landings um, had slowly pushed the Germans back to their own territories. So um, the Japanese declared Vietnamese independence, but installed um, Bao Dei as the emperor. Um, while retaining control, and you'll find a number of texts who, who talk to Dei as a uh, talk of Dei rather as a puppet, and he reappears in our story as I've already mentioned a little bit later on. <laughs>